Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. It is Thursday, and uh, we have a holiday weekend coming up. I was looking through the flyer today for the grocery store, and I was like, oh, great, another holiday, an eating holiday. It seems like that's how we celebrate holidays as we eat things. <sighs> and so I'm still trying to get rid of some pounds that I put on for um, with COVID last year. I, I go back and forth about three pounds, but haven't been able to take off my 19 that I put on. Oh, uh, but someday I gotta quit buying Bluebell and stuff like that. I know, I know how. I just uh, got to get determined again. I don't know what's making that noise. There we are. Okay, well tonight I want to talk to you about keep me in the moment. Which, as you can tell, even with my intro here, I'm already back in the past to COVID. It's really hard to stay in the moment. It's really hard. I've been trying to do that today. I've been trying to stay in the moment. Uh, because that's how God wants us to live. He wants us to live in a moment. He doesn't want us to live in our past. He doesn't want to us to live in the future because He has the future under control. He wants us to live like in the moment. He wants us to make the best choices now for ourselves, like food choices, like sometimes I don't do so good. Um, other choices too He wants us to make. So, that is what we're going to talk about tonight, and I shared a song earlier called Keep Me in the Moment by Jeremy Kemp, such a good song, and the video was so touching that um, goes with this song that I shared, so if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, then after I get off, then go and listen to the song, and maybe, maybe what I'm saying will make more sense. But God wants us to live in the moment, like this moment, I'm sitting in front of this computer, I'm talking to you, I don't need to be thinking about, you know, next week, next month, I need to be thinking about now, and I don't need to be thinking about my past, what's happened in my past, I think that comes from our enemy, that he wants to bring the past up need to live in the moment, so we need to live in the moment, so let's pray in this moment. God, we just come to you and we're thankful that you give us this moment, God, and that this is where you want us to live and this is where your blessings are. Your blessings are in the here and now. They're not in the past and they're not in the future because we do not know what is in the future. So we need to live right now, live for this moment, God. We need to live for you we need to live to glorify you in all that we say and do, God. Thank you, God, for being our creator, for being our sustainer, for being our protector, for being our provider, for being our shelter in the storm, for being our strength and refuge, God. You are powerful and mighty and magnificent, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are from everlasting to everlasting, and you will always be God. God, you are the righteous judge. Nothing is hidden from you. No, no secrets are hidden from you. No secret sin is hidden from you. God, you are kind and compassionate and caring and loving. Excuse me, you are forgiving. You are um, faithful. You are patient because you want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to return to you to repent, God to um, let you reconcile that relationship and make it as if it's new. 
God, we pray for all the people in Florida, God, that um, these family members that are waiting for news of their family members that are missing, God, we just pray that you would be with these family members, that they would feel your loving arms around them through people that surround them, that they would feel that loving compassion of Jesus. God, we just pray for all the rescuers and the workers and all the volunteers, God, that are trying to dig these people out. God, we pray for all the government officials that have had a very hefty thing put on their shoulders, God, for like today is day eight, like more than seven days, more than one week, God. We just pray for them too. We pray for guidance and wisdom for them. We pray for safety for the rescuers, God, and the volunteers. We pray for success, God. We pray for miracles to happen, God. We have we have been hearing miraculous stories of how people just happened to wake up and get out before it collapsed. But there were many, God, that were just caught unaware. They were asleep in their beds and they didn't even know that anything happened. God, we just pray for all these people. I saw, too, that a building collapsed in D.C. I don't know what that's about, God. But I just pray for those people and those workers, too. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God, either in Florida or in other places, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that they would feel your presence, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so I'm still praying for the people in Florida. So many of you know, many don't know because I went to youth last night. None of the youth, none of the leaders knew what I was talking about. Um, I don't even know if they have it on the regular news. I get all my news from YouTube. And so I listen to the local people in the, in the, um, the updates that the government officials give every day that's what I listen to and they had to because of safety for the rescuers they had to um, quit they had to quit their their uh, rescue today for several hours because it was just too risky for the people that were doing the rescues so just keep them in prayer Okay, well, let's de delve into uh, keep me in the moment. I think it's really important. I've found some scriptures about it. Um, it's very important, but it's very hard to do, too. It's very hard to do. I tend to go more towards the future, trying to figure out how I'm going to get things done instead of just doing one thing at a time and focusing on that one thing I find my mind wandering off to, okay, well, I got to do that then, and I got to do this then, and how am I going to do that, and all the details are, you know, coming together. But God wants us in the moment. He wants us now. He wants us to be still and trust Him and do what's in this moment and not what's in the future. Okay, so this is what I shared about this song today really didn't share much because I didn't get anything done until later this afternoon and I did it on my computer which I found out I can share my story and my song on my computer let me start doing my song shares here okay so I love this song and message by Jeremy Camp keep me in the moment these are my thoughts today keep me in the moment it is so hard though when our minds want to drift back to the past and then forward into the future. I've been trying to be in the moment today. Seth and I made our first trip. This is our first trip since COVID. I have not taken Seth to Dollar General since about March of last year because he is a kid that everything he touches goes into his mouth. I do this during flu season anyway. Um, so we took our first trip since COVID back to Dollar General, and he did really well. 
I bribed him with a milkshake. Bribery works great. I learned many years ago that bribery and kids work great. And so I bribed him. And he pushed the basket all over the store like he used to do with me. And have to guide in the front though to make sure that, you know, nobody gets run over. Um, my eye got run over today, but it wasn't bad. Or things get ran over. So um, it was good to be out with him again in public. So we must take advantage of the time that we have been given to make memories with our loved ones because life is so sweet, so fleeting. Life is so fleeting. So this video is a reminder of that. We must stay in the moment because that is where our blessings are, in the moment. God calls us to live in the moment and not to worry about the future, but to trust Him with it. Are you living in the moment today? Uh, please do not stay in the past. It is done. Many people want to live in their past, but it's done. There's nothing that can be done in the past. Absolutely nothing. We can do all kinds of things in the moment. Wow, I did laundry today. I uh, put sheets away today. I did a lot of things in the moment today. I went and got things that we needed for our house. Um, and God has so much better today in this moment and for the future if you will reach out to Him through His Son, Jesus. Jesus is patiently waiting for you to come to Him. So come as you are today. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So that is what I shared today, and we will delve into some scripture. Let's start with Proverbs. Proverbs 27, 1. It may not be on here for very long, so I haven't eaten yet. 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. Let another man praise thee in not thine own mouth, a stranger in not thine own lips. So Proverbs is so full of wisdom. So we don't need to boast about tomorrow and what we're going to do. And, you know, we do have to plan. We do have to make appointments. But we need to realize that God is the one that's really in control of tomorrow. So all we can control are our decisions today. And really, there are things that could happen like right now that I can't control you know, because God is in control. All right, so let's move to Isaiah 38. I mean, not 38, 43. This is my focal verse for this year. And I love it. It reminds us that not to stay in the past either. We don't want to move forward, and we don't want to stay in the past. So Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So, you know, God will make a way when we don't even, we can't even see a way. God will make a way. He is our way maker. And He will do a new thing. We need not stay in the past or think of former things. We need to stay in today. And He will do a new thing for us. Okay, so let's go to... I only did five. I could only find five that I really felt like uh, fit. 
Let's go to Matthew 24. And this is Jesus talking. And I love all of Matthew 24, but I have read it to y'all so many times. I'm just going to do this part. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. So, while we wait, we don't know what the day is. We don't know when Jesus is coming. That's future while we wait we take care of business we take care of god's kingdom we take care of uh, what god wants us to do in the moment like today what does god want you to do today what is god calling you to do is god calling you to sit down with his word and read some of it and learn from him or is god calling you to go and help your neighbor that needs help what is god calling you to do today you know, he calls us all to do things. Today he called me to go and take Seth and just go to Dollar General and get things done. So that's what I did. And I was able to bless some people while I was there by talking to them. You know, I think sometimes when we stay at our homes, we don't have the opportunity to interact with people. And we really need to get out and interact with people more. I know I do. I created my own prison through COVID, um, mostly to protect our son, who ended up getting COVID anyway. But I was so afraid of what COVID was until I actually had it myself. Um, it is survivable. It is not survivable for some people, but it is survivable for 99.8% of the population. So we need to walk in faith and not fear and know that God will protect us. And if we get sick, we just need to pray for him to heal us. Okay, so let's read uh, Matthew uh, 6. Should have read Matthew 6 first. I don't know. Sometimes I guess I think that 24 comes before 6. I don't know. Okay. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. This is Jesus talking to. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So there's enough evil going on today that we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We need to take care of today. We need to make decisions that make God happy, that are obedient to Him. We need to take care of today. So let's read James 4.14. Sorry, I needed to yawn. James 4.14 4, Whereas ye know what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor 
that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So if we know what to do that's good, and we decide not to, that is sin. And so again... We're not to live in tomorrow. We're not to worry about tomorrow. You know, God will take care of tomorrow. We need to take care of today. So if that was all the scriptures that I had to read, and I think I'll read, I didn't read this, not before last. And I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. I think this is all me writing. No. Okay, maybe I'll just read it all because I can't find where. Okay, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. And I'm doing that. A new beautiful day, child, to get things done that need to be done, to go out and get what you need to Child, an opportunity to bless others with the love and light of Jesus. An opportunity to get out, child, in my beauty of creation. It's a beautiful day today. The last few days, the cloud formations have been so beautiful. Uh, be thankful and grateful, child. Every time you are sent out, it is an assignment, child. Thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. With others, thank you for a new beautiful day of your creation. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to go out and be the light and love of Jesus. I am thankful and grateful, God, for all that you are and all that you do. I am thankful for my assignments, too. And he said, yes, child, live in the moment, not tomorrow, the past, or the future. Live in the here and now. I know it is hard for your brain to stay here, but my children miss out on blessings by dwelling on mistakes of their past or moving into the future. The blessings are today in the here and now, not the past or the future. Every moment of life is precious and needs to be taken in. Life is so fleeting and needs to be appreciated also. I said, I see what you are saying, God, and I do struggle to stay in the moment where your blessings are. My mind goes to the past and ahead to the future. I see what you are saying. I see what you are saying in your word. I see it in my life also. Help me to live in the moment, God, being thankful and grateful for the moment I am in and not worrying about tonight or even tomorrow. Keep me in the moment, God, of today. Thank you for meeting me today, God. Thank you that my headache of last night is gone. I had the worst headache, and it was just on this side of my face. And so from here all the way to down here in my jaw, excruciating pain. I don't know what it was, but I took some ibuprofen and it went away. And I'm so thankful because it was very painful. Um, thank you that my headache of last night is gone and thank you for provision for food and supplies help me to just get what we need and not other things of non-importance and I did that I made a list I stuck to my list I'm very proud of myself help me to just get um, 
God, thank you for meeting me today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to all I ask you to do. Keep oh, keep doing quiet time with your son. He understands more than you know, and he needs to keep learning about us. Child, perf perfection awaits you and my children here in the land of beauty, love, joy, and peace. Many other special surprises too. Total unity with no end also. Be ready, child. And I said, Maranatha God, I am so ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't want to die. I want to fly out of here with Jesus. That's how I prefer to go, but I don't know. What's up to God? You know, that's another thing that's not mine. Not mine to figure out. Okay, I'm going to do the E-band. I really like it. Okay, so now is the time that we offer salvation through Jesus. I can't save anyone. All I can do is do the invitation. The Holy Spirit does the rest. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. So the gold on this band represents God, the creator of all. God created everything. Everything that you see, God created. People, things, trees, the water, the land, the moon, the sun. God created all of it. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants you to have a person wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. They are. So the dark color represents sin, which we all have. Which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. We have. None of us are perfect. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death. or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, here's how. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin, for everyone. Everyone. He died for everyone. I should have done this earlier, but I need to adjust that. Well, now my head's cut off. Too much. All right. I don't like to look like a floating head, but I don't like my head cut off either. Okay, sorry. All right. Uh, again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us, everyone. Everyone is invited into God's kingdom through Jesus. Why, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. With God, the good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So we move to the next one, which is the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So, this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if the answer is no, I have never done that, and you want to do that, then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So then the green, the green color represents growth. Growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, so we have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. So the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. Yes. You need to grow once you once you accept Jesus as your Savior. You need to grow. So the next one is the praying man. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then the next one is a water droplet. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we've got the Great Commission. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins. When you trust in Him, tell as many people as you can. And this is um, E3 Resources. This is what this is. So if you called upon Jesus to be your Savior, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Ah, my bangs. And the angels are rejoicing. Okay, well it is that time for me to give God's blessing and to pray and get off of here because I brought everything that God wanted me to bring. So if you think of some more scriptures that talk about keep keeping ourselves in the moment, then put it in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, put it in the comments. If you have any comments, put it in the comments. Okay, so this is God's blessing to you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. All right, we all need some peace. I don't know how long we're going to have peace. But as long as we have peace, we're going to enjoy it. We're going to stay in the moment. We have peace today. So let's stay in the moment. Let's live in the moment. All right, well, I'm going to pray and uh, just do a blanket prayer for everyone, anyone that would come here, um, that God would give you whatever you need, that he would meet your needs. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we can come and we can learn more about your word. We can all learn together, God, because you know I do not know everything there is about the Bible. I am constantly learning new things that you teach me. God, I just thank you. I thank you for teaching us to walk in your ways, God. 
I thank you, God, for protection and provision, for blessings, God. I just pray for anyone that comes to to watch this, God, that you would bless them and their families abundantly, and that whatever their needs are, God, that you would meet their needs. I pray for my friend Josie that comes here often. I just pray, God, for her and her family, for blessings for them, protection and provision for her sister and their families, for her brother and their families, for her grandchildren, uh, for her children and their families, God, just blessings, protection and provision. I pray for safety this weekend, God, as it's a holiday weekend. Grass is kind of dry, so I pray that the fireworks do not spark grass fires. I just pray maybe for some rain tomorrow, God, right before this holiday weekend. I pray for safety for people that are traveling. I pray for my granddaughter that is in San Antonio. I just pray for safety for her. And I pray for my family for safety. God, just to protect them. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do, God. We just pray that you would help us to stay in the moment, just the moment of now, God, to enjoy, to embrace now and not worry about tomorrow, but just embrace now and be thankful and grateful in the now, in the here and now. Keep us in the moment, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, okay, my Pray and Share Warriors, thank you for joining me. Um, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. I was supposed to go to Fort Worth, but I think I have changed my mind. I just don't want to go and drive to Fort Worth. So I think I'm going to wait until, and I'm afraid, I was getting my car fixed and I'm afraid they're going to keep my car. And I'm afraid it's going to end up being there until Monday or Tuesday. Um, even though they told me I could have it Saturday. I don't know. I think I'm going to wait until it's not a holiday. I'm just feeling like I want to stay home tomorrow and not drive to Fort Worth. So I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit and what He's telling me. And God may change my mind tomorrow because sometimes, sometimes we make those decisions out of fear. All right. Well, I prayed so much love. Much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.